My guest today is Rocky Garza. Rocky is a mindset coach, a personal coach, a team coach. He works with companies, individuals, and basically works on helping people to express who they are, what they want to do, what they want to be, and just live happier lives. He has created a book called Kill Doubt, Build Conviction, which is available on his website, which is rockygarza.com. That's R-O-C-K-Y-G-A-R-Z-A.com. In this conversation, Rocky and I dig deep into my own life. We talk about what makes me happy, what drives me, what my passion is, what my bliss is, what I'm doing now, what I would like to do in the future. So we're basically using me as the guinea pig in this conversation, and we uncover a lot of really cool things. And as you'll hear, Rocky has some great ideas. So once again, I hope you enjoy this episode. I truly appreciate you listening to my podcast. And now sit back and listen to this conversation with me and Rocky Garza. Thanks so much for joining the podcast, and I appreciate you listening, and I have an exciting guest today. Rocky and I only met recently on Clubhouse. Uh, We don't know each other that well, but for me, this is going to be an exciting episode because what he does speaks to my heart because we're going to use me as an example today. He's going to work with me during this conversation, and I'm going to ask him questions that any of you might be able to ask him if you'd hired him to coach you and to help you through whatever it is that you're working on. And so I'm very excited to have Rocky Garza. Thank you for coming on, Rocky. It's a pleasure to have you. Yeah, thank you so much, Joe. Uh, it is an honor to be here. It was fun being in uh, in the room on Clubhouse together. And uh, looking back now, I was trying to think about it this morning. I'm like, what room <laughs> were we in? Were we even landed here? And I don't exactly remember even what the room was, but I know at some point you had mentioned and said something that I thought, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to reach out. I know I shot you a DM and we went from there, but I was thinking this morning, how do we even land here? But you know what? Uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm the kind of person that it, uh, all I know is I was supposed to be here and something you said resonated enough to be able to say, I'm going to reach out and, and it's been less than 10 days and here we are. So I'm, I'm really glad to be here. Yeah, that's perfect. That's, it's the way it should happen. It should be that people uh, resonate with each other. There's something that that they can mutually benefit from and then also help the rest of the world by serving in some way. So uh, I'm excited about this. So I like to always start these off to give as much time as you need, but I like to do a backstory. I like to know where you came, who you are, where you came from, where you are today. How did you get there from where you were? So if you don't mind doing that, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would love that. I love that. I, I think so much. Yeah, so I, uh, I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning because I think <clears throat> there is value for all of us um, as we begin to uh, begin or, or continue to kind of unpack uh, who we are and what that means for kind of the steps and the actions we will take moving forward from our present day. Uh, I think I think we kind of have to go back to the beginning. And, and I'm sure we've all heard phrase like our origin story or and so I think there's a there's an immense value in our, our ability to do that. And so um, I was born in Kansas, uh, but I only lived there for like two weeks and then I moved back to Dallas. Um, and so I don't really claim Kansas other than it's on my birth certificate. But uh, Dallas slash Texas has always been home for me. Um, my uh, parents got divorced when I was two. Um, and so uh, my dad got remarried when I was seven. He's still married, has two boys. So I have two half brothers, uh, but I never lived with my dad growing up after my parents got divorced. Um, I moved a ton growing up, um, like like 13 times before I graduated high school, um, just uh, from either my mom's house, my grandparents, back to my mom's to a different house, to back to my grandparents and so on. Um, and really a lot of that was like pre seventh grade. Uh, my mom has been married and divorced a few times um, slash jobs slash just life change. And so we moved, we moved around a bunch. I'm an only child, my mom's only child. Um, so it was kind of just me and her slash me and my grandma uh, and my, my grandfather. That's kind of how my life was growing up. And um, I went to junior high, went to high school, graduated um, high school, went to junior college for a couple of years, um, mostly because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I thought I was going to go play football. And then at the last minute, I was like, I don't even really like football that much. Like, why would I go do that for four years? That doesn't seem like a good idea. Um, Anyway, went to junior college for a couple of years, uh, transferred to AM uh, here in Texas is where I went to college uh, for my junior and senior years where I graduated from. 
Um, went there on a, on a full ride scholarship. I'm not an academic and I barely graduated college, but somehow via my survival tactics of charisma and words and being in the right place at the right time, I found my way into a full ride scholarship to college. Um, after my first semester in college, I uh, lost my scholarship because I didn't make grades. Um, I didn't fail out of college, but I just didn't keep that GPA that you're supposed to have to keep where someone pays us, pays for you to go to school. <laughs> And I look back and I kind of use that and there's, there's probably, you know, a hundred pivotal moments prior to that. But I, but I always kind of lead up to that moment uh, because I think for me, that was probably the first time as a, as a semi-adult, I guess I really wasn't an adult yet, but a semi-adult to realize uh, that was kind of the first pivotal thing in my life that kind of put me in a position to look back and recognize what decisions I had been making up until that point. Uh, you know, I, I think for all of us, I'm a, I'm a pretty firm believer that whatever happens to us between the ages of six and 12 that we do to survive. And when I say survive, I don't necessarily mean life or death, but I do mean what we do to get by right now. Some of us, that is our story. But for many of us, it's not necessarily life and death, but survival is how did we form what we knew to be true about the world, test those theories and then find out they were in fact true. That's kind of the progression of our childhood. And so to me, that 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 a six to 12 age is really foundational in that. It's where we are abstracting things to see how they work. Now, I learned between ages of six and 12, if I could outthink you, outtalk you, outwit you, outschmooze you, outconnect you, um, get to know you, uh, what I would call then vulnerability now as more a mature adult, I actually look back and say called disclosure. I was actually not being vulnerable at anything. I was just disclosing the same information to you. I was telling everybody else. But I learned that if I could do that in such a way, it would allow me an in, but also keep me safe enough that if you left or I left, you couldn't hurt me like the people in my past had. Right. That like this fear of being left, this fear of being abandoned, this fear of not being loved. I had found a way to navigate myself uh, in such a way that I could keep myself away from you, but also convince you we were close enough. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think this moment when I look at college and losing my scholarship was this moment of going, I am finding myself. I'm 20 years old. I'm in college. I now have no money for school. I haven't talked to my dad in three years. I haven't seen my mom in a year and a half. Uh, I don't really have any really good friends because I've isolated myself in this weird dynamic of am I close? Am I not close? What does it actually mean? And everyone thinks that I'm awesome and that they love me. And simultaneously, I've never felt more alone in my life. And I think if I look at my life, and this is not sad, I'm 37, been to a lot of counseling. I feel pretty good about where I'm at today. Okay. But I think as I look at that point in my life and go, all the things that I was doing, all the activity that I was that I was involved in, all the pieces that I was attempting to put together have led me to a place where I am the most alone, the most isolated and recognizing, the most unfulfilled that I've ever been. And yet, there has to be something else. Like there has to be something different than what I have been doing over and over and over and over. And so I didn't know what the answer was. I just knew whatever I'd been doing, it ain't working. And we got to try something else. And so uh, thankfully, I ended up finding a way to my grandparents kind of stepped in and helped me pay for college. And really from that point on, back in 2003, really from then until now, so the last 17, 18 years, has really, for me, I think as I look back, has been this journey of discovery. This, this space of going, how do I, one, discover and uncover who I am? Two, find a way to believe that is good. So I, clarity is one thing, but confidence in that clarity is something totally different. And then once I believe it's good, how do I like actively and then actually do something about it? How do I use that in my life? And um, I ended up going to a place called Sky Ranch here in, in Texas. It's a summer camp uh, for kids. And I worked there full time for a few years right out of college. I was actually uh, on pastoral staff at a church uh, for about three and a half years after that. Um, that's when I met my wife. Uh, we started a photography business back in 2010. And we did that full time together for about five years. And then I started the company. I have now about six years ago. Uh, and so I, and that's, a, that's a fast track of 15 years there. But in all of that, it was this. Uh, discovery, identify, look to see if it actually is good, if I believe it's good. How do I uncover the wounds? You know, there's a, there's a kind of a cheesy phrase uh, I say often, but it's like in order to dress your wounds, you have to address your wounds. And I think for me in that period of time, it was like me addressing my wounds. Like, hey, okay. how many times did someone need to say, hey, bro, you're bleeding before I was like, look at, look at that. That is what that is. You know, like, and I think the last 15 years has been this, these, these continual perpetual moments. And it sounds a little bit like sad and hurtful. And there's definitely moments of sad and hurtful, but how beautiful does it feel the moment we recognize we have a wound and we address it and then we dress it. How much better is that? Right. That's the only way healing can happen. And so for me, the career slash job I have now, uh, for me, is a marriage of my life experience. Uh, how do I take everything that I've seen and known growing up? How do I marry that with eight years of full-time ministry, which I just define as deeply caring for people, the fundamental belief that I think people are good. 
and then marry that with eight to 10 years of entrepreneurship and go, how do we take what we have experienced in our life with a fundamental belief that we are good and put that together to go, what do I get to experience? What is the freedom that could come from the reality of allowing myself to fully be known? What is involved in that freedom? Is it, is it that I get to make more money if that's my desire? Probably. Is it I get to have deeper relationships because that's something that I'm pursuing? Probably. Is it that I have to find a freedom to sit in isolation? And I don't feel fear that everyone's going to judge me or not like me. And I consistently say I'm a people pleaser when in fact, I'm just a relationship seeker? Probably. But I think it comes back to, we have to start in a space to go, am I known? Meaning, do I know myself? Do I have a language for that? Am I clear about that? Do I have confidence that it's good? Do I have the courage to live it out? And then finally, do I have the conviction that says, this is a deep seated belief. I am no longer willing to jeopardize. And there's, that, that, is, that, is, that is huge and mixed with millions of uh, you know, uh, variables that go into all that. But for where I am today, um, you know, why, why do I wake up every day? Today, I would say that I, I wake up every day because I wanna be able to challenge others to live vulnerably so that you can experience the freedom that comes with being fully known. And in that freedom is that I think where we landed this place to go financial freedom, relational freedom, confidence in ourself, trust that we are good. But I think it begins by beginning to live vulnerably because I, I define vulnerability as creating the opportunity to see and be seen by others. If we can't start there, then we don't actually know what we're looking at. So there is no clarity. And if there's no clarity, then the other things don't happen either. And so uh, it's, it's not always that linear and that simple, but at the same time, I kind of think sometimes it is that linear and it is that simple. We, we got to be able to go back though to a place to where we can begin to uproot and uncover what those fear, doubts, obstacles, insecurities are so that we can begin to make a path moving forward. Wow, man, that's powerful. That's a, <laughs> you sure went through a lot in a short amount of time, but uh, I appreciate you laying all that out. Do you feel like you're in the best place you've ever been at this point in your life? I simultaneously feel like I am uh, actively moving in the clearest uh, I have ever felt about me, what I do and what I can do for someone and question almost every day, is this exactly what I'm supposed <laughs> to be doing? And if I could really hone in to what I really think I should be doing, and when I say doing, I mean, uh, for my, to get really specific, business, product, service, price. Like if I could, if I could, like, like, you know, move ourselves in, do I think in my life, is this the most clear and free I've ever felt? 100%. I was looking back in Instagram on my 30th birthday. I'm 37. Now I'll be 38 this year. So almost eight years ago, I was in Marfa, Texas with two friends. We had no kids yet. And I put an Instagram post. It was like me standing back when I used to have hair. Uh, shout out to people like <laughs> him who don't have hair. And I used to have hair. Uh, if you don't know that Joe and I are both bald and uh, I was sitting in front of this bus in Marfa and I had a, it was like 11 a.m. with a margarita and a taco in my hand. And my, my, my caption was like, I'm 30 years old today. It is the best I have felt physically, mentally, spiritually, like emotionally, like, ah, man, great. And I look back at that and I'm like, what a joke. Because today I'm like, I feel the mo, you know, right. but I, but I think, uh, does that mean it's been a constant upward trajectory? No, it's been, I mean, it's been, it's looked at about 97 bell curves between that moment and this moment. Right. But I think in that to go, why I think I come back to, to answer your question, why I come back to go, okay, like with like uh, service product and price, like, is that the right? Um, because I think I feel so passionately about who I am and the belief that it's good and what I can do with that, that it come, it's, a, it's a whole other conversation and podcast episode to go, how do we take that and then find a way to meet a need in the market find a way to communicate it effectively at a price point that is doable, that is actually sustainable, that it's not an exchange for time for money and really build a business out of that. That's the million dollar, no pun intended, question for me, I think a lot of the time is, do I believe in myself what I'm doing and I'm confident in my ability to affect change in someone's life? 100%. Do I always feel confident to know how to sell that? No. And I'm learning more and more that that's okay and I need to go to people for help because if I go back and say, what am I good at? It's not any of those things. And so that's okay. But I have to be able to be also confident enough to go, hey, I need people in my life to help me because I'm not sure I can get there. I, and I shouldn't say that. I am 100% positive. I cannot get there by myself. Right. So you, from my understanding now, you are a coach it, as, as one I, of the things that you do. You're an author. Yeah. You're a coach. We're going to talk about your book later on in the podcast, uh, the yeah. book that's coming out. But, but from my own research, I, I saw certain podcast episodes you were on, either the ones that you've done yourself with guests, um, videos, 
And I saw a piece about identity mapping that you yep. talk about. And I also saw another thing about self-love and, and, but it was self-love focused towards men, right? Because it's, yep. it's, it's a different thing for sure, because 100%. Guys just don't think that way, right? And so that was interesting yep. as well. Yep. But so let's use me as an example, okay? I uh, I'm not allowed to tell you my age because I've been telling my age too much, and my girlfriend Joel thinks that I'm gonna it's gonna cause me harm if I keep saying the age that I am. And so I'm not gonna tell you my age, <laughs> but I'm I'm old. How's that? Um, so. I've gone through my whole life. My, my ultimate focus when I first started was to eventually tour the world as a, as a musician, right. And be this, this famous drummer and tour with John Mayer, let's say as an example. So I went to college for music, but then when I got out, okay. I became an entrepreneur, uh, living down in New York city. I still played, I was a, like a weekend warrior and would go play gigs in you know, Thursday through Sunday but my focus was building a business because I took the mind frame of, hey, instead of me acting as, you know, like being a musician and struggling to make it, how about I do something that I know I'm really good at right now, which is being, creating a business, being an entrepreneur, having that business be successful so that I didn't have to worry about the financial piece any longer. Right. And then having the money, I could go then now pursue a music career and buy my own tour bus and pay really great musicians to be part of my band. And what, what so this was the frame of mind that I had mm -hmm. bad, bad move. I would never <laughs> tell any person in any career of anything, not just music, but anything that you got to go full steam ahead towards the thing that you want. And you can't have, uh, there's, there's people that have different theories on burning the boats and not having a plan B I'm all in on, just have that plan and go for it. Burn the boats. Do not have a plan B. And it'll happen if you put in the work. I didn't put in the work musically. So I am where I am today. I take on all the responsibility that I didn't do what I needed to the 10,000 hours to be John Mayer's drummer. Okay. Now, fast forward. I am a successful as a entertainment booking agent. That I own my own company in Phoenix. Started it in, in 2011 was when it first started and it became more official around 2013. Successful, you know, management entertainment booking agency. I like do it. I'm good at it. I like doing it. Does it, does it make my soul sing? Nah, probably not. Uh, have I found what I should be doing in this world? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Am I, am I servicing? Am I, am I giving to the world something that leaves a legacy that I feel really good about. Yeah. I put hundreds of musicians to work every year, but is that how I want to be remembered? I don't think so. Hmm. So this yeah. is where yeah. you come in. So yeah. I, I sit every day now and I struggle going, okay, I like doing my podcast. I love meeting people like you. I love uh, surrounding myself by humble, kind, successful entrepreneurs, not the ones who are constantly boasting on Clubhouse that they're multi-billionaires and this and that and taking pictures in front of Lamborghinis and jets. So I'm going through the struggle of identity, purpose. Yep. How, how do I service yep. the, the world? Yeah. So my first question almost always uh, and not because I expect you to be, and now if you rattle off an answer, we're going to get to work. If you don't, then you're in the 99% of us who don't know, who always have an answer. So I'm going to give that, give you that freedom. But what do you want? So this is the part that's, that's tough because we talk about, I want financial freedom where I never have to think about money. Okay. And okay, so I want let's, it, let's, I, and yeah, I want part. it also because I want it, to be able to help my family first, which is, you know, let's say my brother, I don't have my, my parents are no longer alive, but my brother and my sister, you know, my, obviously my immediate family, Joelle and my girlfriend of 20 some years, you know, her daughter, my two kids and my immediate family. And then from there, I would love to be able to give $400,000 a year to that charity and give a million dollars mm -hmm. a year to that charity mm -hmm. and go over and build schools and whatever, just that I didn't Great. have to think about that piece of it. Yeah. Okay. So tell me what you feel like, what is accomplished 
if and when you are able to achieve, if I say, what do you want? And your, your guttural response is financial freedom, okay? Then you broke down for me what financial freedom looks like, the practical side of where the money would go and that. What do you feel like is going to happen? What, what, what changes for you if you don't have to think about money anymore? That any action that I take that I feel is the right action, I don't have to think whether or not money plays a part in that because that okay. has been removed. That's been taken off the table. So, okay, so right, I now, wanna... right now, the biggest, in, yeah, right now, the biggest inhibitor to you really pursuing what you believe at any moment is that the first question that always comes to mind is what is the financial implication of this decision? And do I have the capacity to make this decision based on my other responsibilities? I have other places with money. If I choose this, question number one always is what is the financial implication of this correct especially at an older age you're like okay yeah i've been busting my hump and by no means am i in, in any financial distress but sure. to just never to not think to about it okay so let's use that let's use that why can you not go to guatemala in may for a month this year to go help build a school why can't you go do that because if my focus is on doing something like that, then I can't focus on at this point running the business that I have because I had four employees before COVID hit. Now it's me. So I'm literally running this entire business alone again. Okay. Okay. So, so then the so money dries I, up if I'm not yeah, doing it. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So uh, what I want to say, so it's be beautiful. Thank you. What I just heard you say is right now, the problem is not money. Right now, the problem is, is that given a million external circumstances that we couldn't control. I mean, I'm with, I mean, I'm in the same boat as you, uh, but right now the problem is not money. The problem is uh, uh, right now. The problem is not money right now. The tension we are feeling is that we are in a position that our work requires us. And therefore our work, we are questioning whether or not that work that we are doing is the thing we actually want to be doing. Mm hmm it, because I think if you love the, what your, your work that you were doing, again, we're not saying you don't like it. Everybody who's listening, shout out your client or work with him. He loves it. Okay. Just take that note. Joe loves the job. <laughs> I like that. Good. Uh, <laughs> what we're saying is it's not that you don't like your work. We're saying is you feel a longing to pursue and do something different with your time. Maybe we're not sure what that is, but it feels like the contingency point to give you the freedom to go do that is the fear that if I did that, will there be money? And by money, we mean, will there be safety? And by safety, we mean, will we be okay? And by okay, meaning, will I have to rely on someone again? Because where I've relied on people in the past, they have let me down. And I am unwilling to commit myself to something or someone where the, you have the opportunity to walk and it is fundamentally destructive to me. You will not do that to me again. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. And, and it's, it's wanting to do something so much bigger. And I would say, I want to challenge you because it's part of my, my role and who I am as a person. I want you to do an exercise whenever we're done here, just we'll chat about it again offline, is I want you to really look at and define what it is that you see and believe that impact is directly a result and equal to size as opposed to it is to depth. I hear you saying, I want to have a broad impact. I want to do something that is seen and big and broad. And I'm saying just as a challenge, not because I'm right. What about depth though? What about the artist who you work with who couldn't pay their rent or buy groceries for their child if you weren't helping them get gigs and their life is fundamentally different because you've taken a risk to be the person that allows them to pursue something they love that you were unwilling to do, that they are willing to do, and you are actually a proponent for hundreds of musicians to fulfill their dreams and feed their families, and without you as an integral piece in their life, they would not be able to fulfill something significant in who they believe that they are. And so because of that, your impact is so deep and with 100 artists is in fact broad and, 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 and wide that your breadth and depth actually are simultaneously changing the lives of every person that hires you and works with you because they could not pursue their dream in the way you wish someone would have stood in the gap for you 25, 35 years ago. You are consistently standing in the gap and providing that opportunity for somebody else.
And so sure, it's not sexy like a school in Guatemala. Sure, it's not as elaborate as writing a massive check that we get to go to the gala for when COVID is over and drink champagne and someone gives us a, a little plaque that we're going to throw away because we don't care about anyone. That's not why we gave the money. It's not the freedom. I wish I could just choose whatever I want. No, you don't. You you are choosing what you want. If you didn't, if you weren't choosing what you wanted, you wouldn't be doing it. Every human being, this is not just for Joe now, it's for you as a listener. You say, I'm doing something, but I don't really want to. Yes, you do. If you didn't want to, you wouldn't do it, period. Well, I can't do that because if I don't do this, we don't have enough money. So go to an apartment, sell your house, get rid of your car, ride the train. You don't, you don't want to do that. You want to do that. You do what you want. Generally speaking, outside of external circumstances where it's out of our control. So I don't, don't hear me say it if you're like, no, you don't understand where I'm at. You're correct. I don't understand where you're at. And if you're in a position, you absolutely have to do what you're doing and you hate it. Hey, we've all been there to some degree. So let me, I do, I'm not making a statement about your abilities, any, anybody who's listening. But here specifically for most of us, I think you are doing what you want. I think that we lose sight at times that it is in fact what we want. I think we lose sight at times about the impact we are really making. And so sure, maybe, maybe Joe, maybe 40 years ago, you didn't actually make the step that you wanted to take, but there's hundreds of people a year that you are affecting change and given the opportunity to take that step. And you and only you are the one who has the capacity to stand in the gap and help them do and see that. Yeah. I mean, you're right. I I've gotten phone calls and texts and emails saying, dude, you saved my life this year. Like uh, you doubled my salary. But again, I, I, while I, I like getting those calls and emails and texts and I feel good about that. I feel like someone of my, uh, I don't know who say I am. It, as, own it. Own it. Yeah. Own it, say it. It's just like, I, I feel like there's, I could do so much more. I, I, f- I feel like I'm not living big enough. Okay. So that's now, it. So great. Great. That is totally different and has nothing to do with financial freedom. It has nothing to do with depth or breadth. It is you feel in your soul. There is something else before you die that there is you want to do and pursue. And so I'm going to challenge you to say, stop saying that it's financial freedom that's keeping you back. That is untrue. You have, you, there has never been a moment. I, I, you and I have known each other now for 35 minutes exactly, okay? <laughs> I know by just talking to you for 35 minutes, there has never been a moment in Joe Costello's life where he did not do and have the capacity to make sure that he had the ability to care for himself and those around him, no matter how hard it was, he was one to do what was required to make it work, right? Yeah. Okay, so nothing is different today than it was five years, 10 years, or 25 years ago. So if there's something big and audacious, if there's something you're saying, this is, this is it for me. If you're saying, I, I want to get to the root of this other thing that I can talk about is like money and freedom and donations, and, but, it, but all those things fall into a philanthropic legacy, giving of self to other space that we, we, we could pick a million things that fall in that category. Great. Then let's do, let's figure out what do you want? What do you, where do you really want to have an impact? The day you're gone, they say, man, that guy, Joe. And I bet, I bet if we went to your uh, clients you've had the longest, if we picked 10 clients you've had the longest and gave them a worksheet to fill out and say, could you give me the attributes about Joe you appreciate, what you feel like he has done for you, the impact he has had on your life, I bet every single one of them would say something very synonymous to each other. And then if we could take that and say, where do you want to point that energy? That is Joe. The music, the, 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 the gigs, the entertainment, that just happened to be the, cat, the, the, the tunnel, the vessel, the... We, we knew it and we liked it and we found it out. And then, you know, fast forward 20 years, we wake up and here we are. I think you're just saying, I want to change the vessel. The work you're doing, we've already agreed is impactful. The ch- people texting you saying, you are changing my life, saving my life. That's like shit that people send to like a paramedic or their brain surgeon or like they don't send that to their music manager. Like that, what, is it, what does that even mean? Okay, so we're identifying the beauty. We are identifying the uniqueness. We are identifying the very specific impact that you have had, you currently have, and you future have to continue to make. We are saying we got to do the work to identify where do I want to point that and where do I want to spend the next 15, 20, 30, 40 years pointing that energy because I know that I have it and I know that I can and have a proven track record to say that it's there. So where do I want to point it? I don't want to think about what is inhibiting me from changing the direction. I want to identify the, 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 the component that's going to allow me to push it in that direction moving forward. 
Yeah. So here's, so I've had other people on the podcast that and one of them happens to be uh, a gentleman named Patrick Combs and Patrick and his partner, Eric run a company called bliss champions. And the whole okay. purpose of it is finding your bliss, right? Mm -hmm. Finding your purpose. Mm -hmm. It's, it's this, and this has been the theme this whole past year. Okay. What, what is it like when COVID hit the world shut down? Right. And so the entertainment it, business got hit really hard. So I basically had a, a list of things I wanted to do. Starting the podcast was one of them. Starting a YouTube channel with Joe Allen was another thing we did. But when I sit here and I, and I went through an exercise the other day where I, you make two columns and you make, uh, I forget what it was, if it was like all the things you're good at and all the things you're interested in or something like that. And you draw, you, you draw an arrow from the left column to the right column to the thing that sort of matches it to narrow down what it is that you think you're here to do. That's the part. And I look at it and I go, God, at my age, why would I still be struggling to find that thing? It's, it's, it, and that's the frustrating part. It's like, how do people, and, and this is for my audience too. This is anybody who's listening. It, and I am so jealous of anybody that has found their purpose, their bliss, wakes up every day and go, this is what I was put here to do. This is what I love to do. And not only does this all work for me, but it actually creates this world that I, I like to live in. And I can, mm -hmm. and I, and I don't think about money, like the combination mm -hmm. of have, doing, having your bliss, your purpose and your bliss. And at the same time, not thinking about anything financial to me, that's like the, the match made in heaven. Yeah. I mean, my answer to that is, yeah, yeah. If you can, uh, if you find that course, Hey, I'll pay for both of us to go. Uh, <laughs> and I say that, and I say that like, uh, uh, 50% uh, joking, also 50% serious, but I say that because I want to humanize for you and mostly for you and me, cause we're the ones talking, but for all, for all the listeners as well, I want to humanize the reality. I want to humanize the statement of what you are saying and feeling that even as me, someone that I'm going to make a, 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 a few assumptions and then you correct me if I'm wrong, but like you go and you're like, okay, I look at this guy, Rocky, and I looked at this brand uh, and sure he had a few broken links in his website, but that's okay. I, Cause I helped him with that. But uh, he, I, he has a brand and he's on point in his colors and his photos. And he seems clear about what he's doing. I heard him on clubhouse and I said, yes, about my, on a podcast. And like, he seems to be speaking truth and he seems to be genuine and uh, all the words you would use that you hope you could say about yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Like he he has this and this and this. So, and I say all that because I want to humanize the reality of like, sure, that is true. I feel pretty good. Like I have to be able to stand confidently and go, I don't have to caveat that like, I feel like I have a good marriage and I work really hard at it. And I, I'm trying to be the best father that I can that, that with, with limited knowledge and experience of not really having one growing up. And I feel like I'm, I'm crushing it. Like I love my kids and they love me. And, uh, and both, not one or the other. Like, um, and so like I have this idea, this, this, another, a book that I want to write. So I'm going to pitch it here and we'll see if it resonates. If it resonates, we'll write it. If it doesn't then scrap it, it's terrible. So, but I think we all live me too in this space. And there's an old game we used to play when we were young called two truths and a lie. Right. And you say two things that are true and one's a lie. And you got to guess which one. Okay. I think we all collectively every day, we have been lied to and conditioned that we forget that there are two truths and a lie in every statement that we make. And then we go, I'm either going to have this or this. I'm either going to be the full expression of everything that I am and financial freedom and it's this, or life's probably pretty hard and it's kind of dull and it doesn't really make sense. And here's the, here's the premise. There's always two truths and a lie. And the two truths always exist together. And the only thing that makes life real and worth living is that both truths have to be true simultaneously. The lie is, is that we think we only have to believe one. The lie is we think only one is actually true. So you know what 2020 was like for you and me? I'm going to chalk it up. It was actually, man, it was good. Like we mm -hmm. did good work. Yep. And it was really, is cussing allowed on your podcast? I don't gotta listen yeah, to that. absolutely. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it was good and it was really fucking hard. Yeah, both. So the two truths and the lie are that it was really good and really hard, and the lie says it's either one or the other. And so for this scenario, for you, God, there's got to be more. I gotta. There's got to be something out there that if I could just get this, then this thing would happen. But instead, I'm going to have this, which means, I guess it'll just be, it is what it is and everything is fine. But like, it wasn't great. It was just like, it worked. But no, what if, 
what if what you're doing now is working and the fact that it's still working, it's just you and yes, sad four employees are gone. So you're still kind of, you're back in the weeds again, but what you're doing, you can do in your sleep. You got a podcast and you got this guy who's bald with big eyebrows in your podcast right now. <laughs> we on Clubhouse. So you got at least a little bit of autonomy to do what you want, right? So yeah. both can be true. S continue with what you're doing and streamline, streamline, put it down. The processes, squeeze it, systematize it as more than you already, I'm sure it already has, but make it even more so that we only need one employee to make up for the three we had last time for you to have a little bit of breathing room to go both. I think I can have this and I think I can create the, uh, the depth of impact in every arena of my life that I'm looking for. Because I think if we could, you and me, our, our listeners, but you and me, if we could find the places where we recognize the depth of our impact was so not only significant, but, but it scratched the itch we had in ourself and our own soul, we would think less about money. And, and listen, I'm a proponent for money. I'm trying to make money. I got a business because I want money and I got a business because I want nobody. I don't want somebody else to tell me how much I can make. I want to try to find and make as much as I can. I'm all about money. Okay. I'm not, let me be very clear about that. But when I go to my son's room, he says, hey, dad, can you play with me? I say, sure, what do you want to do? He says, I want to wrestle. It's okay, let's wrestle. And I'm experiencing a moment in my own life that I hardly ever experienced as the son in that engagement. I'm not thinking about how much money that I made. I'm not, I'm not thinking about who did or didn't pay their invoice. I'm not thinking about if I, can I get, if I get enough money, you know what? I could wrestle as much as I wanted to if I made more money. No, you know what? I can wrestle as much as I want to. That's the end of the statement. I want to challenge us. I, somebody asked me, I did a bunch of a long, a long rant on Instagram, my stories yesterday. And a good friend of mine messaged me this morning. He was like, hey, this is awesome. Also, why does this matter? And he wasn't being a smart aleck. He was like, hey, I'm trying to help you what if, uh, to the expression to be fully known. He was like, what happens when you're fully known? Why is that good? Why does it matter? What do I get? Why do I, and I'm like, hey, you're a good, really good friend because I don't really talk about that that much, so I appreciate that. But I think our conversation today is kind of leading to that place to go, so, so, so then what, Rocky? You're just telling me to just do what I want? No, I'm telling you, friend, you're already doing what you want, but I feel like you don't want to do it. So I'm asking you to ask yourself the question, what do you want? It, it, do, you, do you want to know the language that you need to have for yourself so you can find the freedom to be able to pursue what you want? Okay, then let's do that. Let's figure it out. Why do you do what you do? How do you do what you do? What do you do? That's what identity mapping is. Identity mapping is a four-hour process that you and me walk through one-on-one -on -one or me and a group of your team or organization walk through in eight hours and you will leave. I can guarantee you 100%, you will leave with the clearest language you have ever had about how you operate as a human being, not in professional, as a human uh, you, will, you will create 13 words in a piece of paper that are make impossible. It is mathematically impossible for anyone in the world who has ever been alive or currently alive to choose the same 13 words as you and put them in the same order. It's impossible. And we're not even talking about you as a, what you're doing. We're talking about 13 arbitrary words in a piece of paper. Some of us need language. That's step one. We need language because we, we're not clear. We would call step one clarity, but clarity only comes when you can see something. If you don't have the language, you can't see it. So everything is a reaction. Not, it is not us being proactive. It's us being reactive, right? So one, some of us need language. I just don't know. I, I know what I'm good at. But like, I don't really know how to, okay, you need words. Some of us have words and that's where we get caught. Cause like we have the words. I know why and how and what I know. I've been doing this a long time, but it just doesn't feel like it's good. You know, like I feel like I'm missing something. Well, that's, that's confidence. Confidence is simply the ability to believe that it's good. You, you, you referenced earlier, you know, we talked about self-love and self-care and how much specifically for men. You know, I think men, most men lack, lack confidence. We make up for the fact that we lack confidence by, by trying to conquer something as opposed to cultivating something. We think if we could conquer it, then we win as opposed to cultivating and it lasts forever. Nobody, nobody who conquered something has a good legacy. They're an asshole. But every person you know has a great legacy cultivated something beautiful because it's still growing. That's what a legacy is. A legacy is not a marker of what you did. A legacy is the fact that what you did continues to, to thrive. Right? And so yeah, yeah. some of us, some of us need clarity. Some of us need language. We get the language, then we need clarity. Can we see it right? Can, does it make sense to us? Yeah. Okay. Do we have confidence? Can we look at that and believe it's good? Self-confidence is the ability to look at yourself and say, that is good. Okay. Got it. Clarity and confidence. Great. What's next? Okay. Do you have the courage? Courage is the ability to move forward at any pace, even in the midst of fear and unknown. Are you willing to every day move towards the thing that you really believe? <laughs> 
Yes, I am. Great. And you did it yesterday? Yep. You do it today? Yes. Great. Last step. Conviction. Do you believe that thing in your soul enough that it is a deep-seated belief you are unwilling to waver from or jeopardize no matter what comes your way? Motivation is telling your mind you can do it. Inspiration is telling your heart you can do it. Conviction is telling your soul you must do it. That's why it's the last step. It takes a lot of work. And so some of us, we need language. Some of us get the language and identity mapping, then we need clarity. That means you need a help, you need a coach, you need somebody in your life. It doesn't have to be me, it could be anybody you want, but we need somebody in our life to go, hey, help me see what I can't see and help me have the confidence to believe that it's good. And then at some point, people are out in my space, I would say at that point, hey, we did our thing. We got the words, we got the clarity, we got the confidence, we're ready, we're doing it, I need a plan, great. I have a good idea, you probably need somebody other than me to, to execute the plan though, because I'm still trying to figure out my own plan. I'm probably not a guy who should tell you about your plan, right? Like I know where my butt, where the stops and I'm ready to pass you on to the next man or woman who can really help you. And so I think for all of us, we find ourselves in any variable of any one of those places at any point in time. I think it begins by us acknowledging that what is that place and where am I at and what am I gonna do with that? Yeah, I feel like going through this process and and not only telling you this story on this episode, but having this conversation with myself, having this conversation with Joellen, having it with other friends, that to me, it's the more and more I can talk about it, my hope is that the clarity will come because I have to, like you said, it's super important. It's the language, right? It's how you you talk about it and it's talking about, it's also saying more of what you want as opposed to more of what you don't want, right? Because what you think about and what you talk about is what ends up becoming more true. So you have to be careful about the words you use and the thoughts you think. So, you know, that's why I, I it's fun to talk about this with you because the more and more I talk about it, I, I feel like it helps to I don't know. You know, I, I'm hope my hope is that it helps to bring clarity at some point and say, this is what you were here to do. And the cool thing is that you hit upon was don't throw away the, the baby with the bathwater. Like you've already done a lot of cool things and you've helped people, but you know, I think I'm in a different stage now. It's like, what do I do with the remaining 40 years of my life? If I, if I actually reach that. <laughs> so, and I think, and I think, uh, I think that's a great question to ask. And I think there's great opportunity for all of us to think about, to consider, regardless of our age and where we are in our career, our job, whatever language we want to use. There is great opportunity for us to be able to say today, I'm not going to talk about what I don't want. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about what I do want. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look and say, do I think I have the words to identify that? I don't. Great. Ask for help. I don't either. My whole business is helping people have identity, purpose, understanding who you are, what that means, and why that matters to be fully known. And you know what I did last week and I'm doing this week? I got three different people coming to my office to help me work through a process to really hone in my why, what it is, because I can't do it by myself. It doesn't work that way. Humans, we're not, we're not designed that way. Right? Yep. We, have only, we only have eyes in the front of our head for a reason. Because we were made to have somebody behind us. We're made to have somebody with us. Yeah. And so I hope if you're listening today and you're joined us wherever you are in the car or at home, and I hope you, if I could leave you with anything, it would be that don't let fear, doubt, obstacle, insecurity. They all exist. They're all human. We all have them to say you don't, you're lying. Yes, you do. Join the crowd. Come to the party. But don't let those things be the lie that we continue to believe that inhibit us from really pursuing the things that we love, the people we love, the relationships that we love. Doubt is sneaky, man. It, it doesn't, it's, it's sneaky. It doesn't care about us. It is, it will wait. It is patient. And just the moment you think you have the gusto to do it, it's going to remind you of some BS story that somebody told you at some point in your life. Don't, don't let it win. It's work. It's work. Digging, uprooting, cultivating, unearthing. It ain't easy. I can tell you that right now. Not easy but it can be not easy and good. Both things can be true. The lie is it's only going to be one or the other. And that's just not how it works. Yeah. That's a powerful statement you brought up in this, this episode. It's really cool. The, the, the one lie and the two truths, right? It's, it's a cool thing to remember to keep that in, in your mind. And I, 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 I like that a lot. It was really cool.
Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So do me a favor. Let's talk about the book. Yeah. Yeah. So the book is called Kill Doubt, Build Conviction. Um, and kind of under the premise of really what I talked about here just in the, this last part. Um, so I, I'm kind of at a place where in my experience and working with individuals in my own life, uh, I believe there are two stories that are at play in our life at all times. The stories that were told to us about us and the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves. Those two stories hold an immense amount of weight. They become wildly impactful when they intersect. So I grew up, people telling me my whole life, stories told to me about me. Rocky, you're too intense. You're too emotional. You're too this. You're too, right? And so when, when that story, I can't control that. Now, I'll be very clear. That is a story told to me about me. I can't control that. But when the story I tell myself about myself is, Rocky, you're too intense. Did you see their face? Did you see his face when you were talking to him? Calm down. It's not too much. Now what happens is those two stories collide. And upon that intersection, I believe, is where doubt, fear, and obstacle is born. It's birthed in that moment. And every time those intersect again, it grows legs and grows feet and grows arms and becomes more active in our life. The book is a half one part workbook, one part my story, one part encouragement to you to go, hey, how do we begin to unpack that? We lay out the concept of the two truths. We lay out each story and have you walk through that in your own life. We have you get to a place to go now look for ones that are complimentary. That doesn't mean they're good. It just means they, they match, right? Rocky, you're too intense. Rocky tells himself, Rocky, you're too intense. That's a complimentary story. At that intersection, I need to identify my doubt. That is, I'm too much for people. The lie, people will not love me if that's who I am. The truth, I am intense and it is good, right? And so the book is a, is a process about seven or eight chapters where we walk through um, that, that process. Hey, let me lay out the concept. Here's what it looks like and then get to work. Start making your chart, fill out your story, find the doubt, find the lie, find the truth. And then we kind of walk you with that through either email and or text options we have that we ask you at the end of a chapter. Hey, text me right now. Tell me what you just found out. And then we're going to make sure we follow up with you to make sure that we can do that. And so um, the book, Killed Out, Build Conviction. You can get a copy. You can order one today at rockygarza.com. There's a link there or rockygarza.com slash book. Um, and that should take you right to it. Uh, order a copy and we'll, we'll ship it out um, there. It is in uh, editing slash printing right now. So they should ship sometime uh, end of April. Cool. Okay. And uh, is it, so are you only going to have it on your site or do you think it'll eventually be up on Amazon um, or somewhere else like that? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see for now, it'll just be on our site. Okay. Um, um, one for in, in full transparency, just for a, uh, a traffic and funnel, just to drive people to our site, uh, mm -hmm. go to a conference, they speak, Hey, go get it, go to our website and read everything else while you're there. Um, and I think also just, uh, this is my first experience in writing a book. I would have, if you would have told me I was going to write a book a year ago, I would have laughed at you. Uh, I'm a talker, not a writer. Uh, <laughs> come to find out you can write books by talking. You just use dictation and talk and then it pops up into a word document. It's beautiful. Uh, and so, so we'll see, I think as, as more things come, um, you know, for those, for those folks who have written uh, books before or thought about it, you know, it's a very interesting process to publish, self-publish, go with a publisher and so on and so forth. And yeah. uh, right, right now, Rocky Garza is not a name that any publisher is like, Hey dude, we want you to write a book. Uh, so if that happens, I'm sure we'd go the Amazon route and put them there at some point. But for now, I just, I want to help some folks. And I think um, best way to do that is to, to go, to go get it at that place. So. Perfect. What's the best way for, the audience to get in contact with you? What's your preferred method of communication? So you have rockygarza.com, correct? As yep, your website. Yep. So you could and then yeah, you can check out rockyyards.com for speaking. Uh, so I spend about a third of my time keynote speaking in workshops, both for what I call external conferences, meaning uh, an individual is going to put on a conference for, for a group of people they can buy a ticket to, uh, and then internal conferences. So business and organizations hire me to come and speak to their staff. Uh, a third of my time is kind of spent in the... Um, team space. So working directly with teams and organizations in a smaller format, more intensive kind of identity mapping for teams, basically. Uh, and then about a third of my time with individuals. So doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, we got a 12 week program uh, that folks can jump into. It includes a four hour identity mapping session. And then we meet once a week, uh, every week for 12 weeks um, to really help people get to that stage where I feel like, okay, you're clear and ready to be handed off to kind of jump into that next arena. So um, yeah, hit me up on uh, uh, Instagram, Clubhouse, Facebook. There's not a lot of Rocky Garza's out there. Uh, and uh, so I try to be the first um, to grab those name. So it's just at Rocky Garza on every platform that you could want to find me on or that I would want to be on. I'm there. I'm not a TikToker, um, but uh, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, and website. Also Clubhouse. You can catch me on any of those. Great. All right, man. Well, I appreciate your time today. I appreciate going to this, this exercise with you. Um, I hope it was helpful to the audience and uh, I love the work that you're doing. It, it speaks to me. As you can tell, I, I'm going through the process myself. And uh, it was really, it was an honor to have you here and, and to talk this through with you. I really appreciate your time. 
Yeah. Thank you so much, Joe. I appreciate it. It was great to connect on Clubhouse. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, and I look forward to talking to you again. Yeah, my pleasure, man. You take care, okay? Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I want to thank you for listening to my podcast. I know you have many options to listen to various podcasts, and I'm honored that you chose to listen to mine. I would love it if you would rate my podcast five stars and write a nice review. It really helps to bring up the rankings of the podcast to other listeners. Once again, thank you so much for listening to The Joe Costello Show. I appreciate you very much. Thank you.